it's great joy to be with you today and this is the greatest day of your life and god is going to make you have a discovery that discovery will change your life it will change your family and you are set for all round success for the rest of your life you'll never be the same again in jesus name tell your neighbor i'm going to experience wonder today is a wonderful day in my life i will never be the same again amen let's close our eyes for prayer heavenly father we thank you we bless your name because we know you are mighty god we have come here tonight because we have appointment with you and we know everyone here tonight will experience your wonder in jesus name we pray lord the supernatural will begin to happen now as your word goes forth your power will go forth your strength and might will go forth healings miracles deliverances dominion victory for everyone confirm it O lord in jesus name we pray thank you very much god bless every one of you tonight i want to talk to you and then pray with you when looking at the word of god on the wonder of the name of jesus the wonder of the name of jesus in isaiah chapter 9 verse 6 for unto us a child is born unto us a son is given and the government shall be upon his shoulder and his name shall be called wonderful Counselor, the mighty God, the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. For unto us a child is born. And people will be wondering, what kind of child will this be? And before their wonders have a revelation and a realization, we are told, unto us a son is given and before they could tell this son or this child that became a son then we're told of what will happen and it says the government the government shall be upon a shoulder and then you begin to wonder now this individual a child a son, a governor, a ruler. Who could this be? Then we're told his name shall be called Wonderful. One of wonders that a child, a son, a governor, a ruler will take the government of the world upon his shoulders. And then we are told he will be counselor. He will be mighty God. He will be the everlasting father. And he will be the prince of peace. And this verse of scripture is talking about no one else but the Lord Jesus Christ. When Jesus came, you know the way he came. His conception was a wonder. His birth was a wonder. And the protection in infancy, that was a wonder. And when eventually he came to the water of baptism, what happened there was a wonder. Other people have been baptized in River Jordan before Jesus showed up. Immediately was baptized coming out of the water. The heavens opened up. The voice of the Father spoke, and then the Holy Ghost 
came up on him. What a wonder. He went to the wilderness and the devil tempted him. The result of the temptation was a wonder. And then the angels came and ministered unto him. All a wonder. He came out of that wilderness of temptation. And then he came in the power of the Holy Ghost. He showed up in the temple. And they opened the Bible. Even the opening of the Bible was a wonder. Because immediately they opened the Bible. They found a place where it was written of him. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. And he has anointed me to preach the gospel. The good news. The glad tidings. Unto the poor. And to bring deliverance to the captives. And the opening of, of the eyes to the blind. He closed the book. They were all looking at him. And he said, wonder of wonders. This day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. And then from there he went out. Everywhere he went, he went in the power of the spirit of God. What had never happened before in the ministry of Elijah, Elisha, David, Daniel, and the rest of them. Blind eyes began to open and they wandered. And the lame rose up, started walking, and they wandered. And they walked on the sea, and they wandered. And he turned, uh, he turned water to wine, and they wandered. And then he fed 5,000 and more with just a little piece of meal. And they wondered. And his life and ministry was a wonder. And then he was crucified. Watch a wonder. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? The greatest of all wonder. And there was a thief crucified by his side. And while he was still suffering, and the thief said, remember me. When you come into your kingdom, wonder of wonders, today you'll be with me in paradise. And then he died, and he was buried. And then, you know, the soldiers were there. The guards were there. And they put a big stone on the tomb. On the third day, power came from heaven. Rolled away the stone without the assistance of human hand. What a wonder. And then he rose triumphantly. And as he rose up, all the soldiers fell to the ground. That's a great wonder. And then he appeared to his own disciples. All the doors were locked. And while they locked the doors, then he appeared before them and said, Peace be unto you. What a great wonder. And then eventually appeared to them all those 40 days, giving them a valuable proof. That this is the Christ. On the final day on earth. The disciples were before him. And he was addressing them. All of a sudden. The force of gravity. That acts on anything that goes up. That must always come down. Lost its power on this son of God. And he was going up like this. What a wonder. And the heavens received him. Out of their side, and he went to sit down at the right hand of majesty on high. What a wonder it was then. Two angels appeared and said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye here gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, whom you have seen going up, the appearance of those two angels giving us the testimony about Christ that went up who is coming again. Watch a wonder. And then at the end, at the close of the day, at the close of time, at the end of history, this same Jesus will come in like manner. Watch a wonder. From the beginning, what I'm telling you is this from the beginning. Of the conception of Jesus Christ. To the consummation of the coming of Christ. From that time until the time to come. Everything will be a wonder. And if you hook up with this wonder walking Christ. Your life will become a wonder. Every day will become a wonder. Your sleeping and waking will be a wonder. Your walking will be a wonder. Your success will be a wonder. Your happiness and joy will be a wonder. 
your children will be a wonder. And your business, the wonder working power of God, will touch your business. You know, as you hook on with Jesus, number one, there will be the wonder of salvation. You know, in your life, as you come to Christ, as we talk about Christ that works wonders, and then you say, yes, this is what I want. Number one, there will be the wonder of salvation. Number two, there will be the wonder of supernatural healing. And if you are there tonight, and you link up with Christ, because this Christ is the origin of wonder, is the perpetrator of wonder, is the creator of wonder, is the producer of wonder, is the one that makes wonder to penetrate into your life. As you come tonight, and you link up with Christ. Number one, the wonder of salvation. Number two, the wonder of supernatural healing. If you are blind, your eyes will open. If you are lame, you'll rise up and walk. If you are tied up and bound up, the Lord will loose you and release you. Number three, the wonder of supernatural deliverance and dominion. Every power of Satan in your life will be broken. All the power of evil spirit in your life will be totally destroyed. There will be the experience of the power of supernatural deliverance and dominion. Number four, there will be in your life the wonder, the wonder, the wonder of total freedom. You wake up in the morning, you're free. You go to your place of work, you're free. You're walking on the road, you're free. You go to the village, you are free. You come back, you are free. January to December, you are free. The wonder of total freedom. You'll be free from sin. You'll be free from sickness. You'll be free from satanic attack. Any arrow of the devil, any curse of the enemy, you will be totally free. You see, many people don't understand that Jesus is a wonder. And when you link up with Jesus, when you hook up with Jesus, you become a wonder yourself. And you see why we came at this time. And you see why you have come at this time. Is that there will be a connection between you and heaven. There will be a connection between you and this wonder we are talking about. And from this very night, you will be a wonder to everybody that looks at you. Number four, then, the wonder of total freedom. Number five, there will be the wonder of abundant life. The wonder of abundant life. You know, many people are living from hand to mouth. And there is no abundance in their lives. And they are almost living, almost dying. They are living at the edge of life. It's like poverty has visited them and poverty has taken residence in their house. But today, as you link up with this Jesus we are talking about, there will be the wonder in your life, the wonder of abundant life. You know what Jesus said? He said, the thief cometh not, but for to steal, and to kill, and to destroy. But I am come, that you might have life, and that you might have life more abundantly, and you will have it tonight. And then number six, the wonder of supernatural power. That when you come and you link up with Christ, no other power will be able to conquer you anymore. You will be on top of every circumstance, every situation in your life. The wonder of supernatural power. And then number seven, the wonder of heavenly inheritance. The wonder of heavenly inheritance. When you close your eyes in death, and when you go to the regions beyond, then Jesus will be standing to welcome you. And then forever and ever, forever and ever, forever and ever, you will be with the Lord in heaven. You'll be singing with angels. You'll be living with the Almighty God. And then you will look at yourself and you will wonder at yourself. Me of all people, I am in heaven. I am in the company of angels, in the company of saints, and I'm there to live forever. The wonder of heavenly inheritance. That's why we came, and that's why we're together. And I pray this mighty working power of the Lord 
that produces wonder in our lives will come to your life today. As you surrender your life to the Lord, and you say, Lord, all I am asking is, I want to be a wonder in this world. A wonder to my enemies. A wonder to my friends. A wonder to my family. A wonder to my fellow uh, students. A wonder everywhere. Everything you ever desired in your life, that is good. All that will come to your life. When you link up and you hook up with Jesus Christ and you become a wonder, it will happen tonight. But God needs your cooperation. God needs your cooperation. We're coming now back to Isaiah chapter 9. Isaiah chapter 9. Unto us a child is born. I've told you already that Isaiah was talking about Jesus Christ. He was born in Bethlehem. But why was he born? You see, there are many people that think, unto them a child is born. You know, there are people that sit here in Africa. And they don't understand that Jesus Christ was born for us. They will say, unto them the Jews. Unto them the whites. Unto them, the other people, a child is born. But the moment you come to realization that this is for you, for God so loved the world. Is this place a part of the world? Is this place a part of the world? Is your state a part of the world? Is Nigeria a part of the world? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Unto us a child is born. Unto us a child is born. You know, what if a child is born in the natural way in your family? And the child is brought from the maternity to the house. And the father falls his hand, he will not receive the child that is born. And the mother even falls the hands, I will not receive the child that is born. And then all the children, the other children in the family there, they will not receive the child that is born. That will be unnatural. That will be unreasonable. That will be unrealistic. When Christ is given to you, it will be unnatural that you don't stretch forth your hand of faith and receive him. Unto us, a child is born. And the natural thing to do, and the realistic thing to do, and the reasonable thing to do, and the fair thing to do, and the expected thing to do, is to stretch forth your hand and receive that child because unto us, a child is born. And if you know that that child that was born in Bethlehem, the Lord Jesus Christ was born because of you, was born because of you to become a wonder in your life, then the reasonable thing to do, the realistic thing to do, the natural thing to do, the expected thing to do is to say, praise the Lord unto us. A child is born. And that child, Jesus Christ, is presented to you now. And then you stretch forth your hand. You embrace him. You receive him. You carry him. You accept him. Because a child is born unto us. And then it goes on. Unto us, a son is given. Unto us, a son is given. Would well, you know that all the blessings of heaven, they are in Christ. All the joy of heaven, you find in Christ. All the rest of mind and the peace of mind that you're looking for, you find in Christ. That's why he said, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. There is no rest of mind outside Christ. There is no peace of your soul outside Christ. There is no satisfaction in life outside Christ. 
Have you ever wondered why people drink? They're looking for satisfaction. Have you ever thought why one bottle of drink will not satisfy and they have to go for a second bottle and they are not satisfied and they have to go for another one and they are not satisfied and they have to go for another one and they are not satisfied? Satisfaction is in Christ. And outside Christ, no amount of bottles of wine you drink will ever satisfy you. Have you ever wondered why people go from woman to woman? What are they looking for? Satisfaction. Why then are they not satisfied with one woman? They have to go to another woman. And they're not satisfied. They have to go to another woman. And they're not satisfied. And they have to go to another woman. And they're not satisfied. Never. Because satisfaction is found in Christ. Have you ever wondered why people run after money, 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 money every time? They want satisfaction. If I can only get all the money I need in my life, I will be satisfied. Why then? They've got some money now. They've got thousands. Not satisfied. They've got hundreds of thousands. They're not satisfied. They're not satisfied. They've got a million. They're not satisfied. And they, they've got billion. They have not satisfied. Why? Because satisfaction can never be found outside Christ. Come unto me. All ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest, satisfaction, joy. And tonight, that is your day. Amen. Tonight, all the satisfaction you are looking for, and you thought you could get it in the bottle, you could get it in women, you could get it in money, you could get it in social functions, you could get it in exalted position society, and you didn't have. Tonight, you are making the greatest discovery of your life. Amen. You will have it in Jesus' name. Amen. Unto us, a son is given. Unto us, a son is given. What if the son is given to you? And it comes with all joy, happiness, satisfaction, rest, peace with everything heaven can ever provide and then you do not accept him you do not receive him what good can a gift do in your life until you receive the gift what good can anything do in your life until you receive that thing the same thing jesus christ has been given to you as a gift from heaven God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son that whosoever in the whole wide world will believe on him will not perish, will not perish, I will not perish. I said I will not perish. And it's in your hand, it's in my hand. The means by which we'll have life eternal life abundant life happy life heavenly life that means it's in christ and christ is given to you and to me and the lord is saying unto us his son is given and then we receive him what does that mean to receive him to accept him to embrace him to believe him because you know as you come across different places you'll find people that will say i received christ i have accepted christ i am a christian i belong to christ we use many words how do we know whether in the real sense i have received christ or not you have received christ or not look at it it says and the government shall be upon a shoulder and the government shall be upon a shoulder what does a government do a government controls you know we have a government in our country we have a government in our state over here we have the council the government in the local government area and a government controls. A government will control the resources of the land. 
will control the policies of the land, will control all the administrative sections in the land. Now, the government shall be upon a shoulder. Now, what if in our state here, we have the government, and then we also have another state nearby, they also have a government. And what if the government here is trying to control our resources, and the government of another state from the south-south here is trying to control the same resources, and the government of another state in the southwest is also trying to control here, we say, what kind of government is this? There will be confusion. Do you know many people that say they have accepted Jesus? The question is, is it only Jesus Christ that has the control, the governance, the directives, the policies of your life? Or are you controlled on the one hand by tradition? Controlled on the other hand by Satan? Controlled on the other hand by evil spirits? Controlled, on the other hand, by society. Controlled, on the other hand, by other powers. And then there's confusion in your life. You want to go this way. Who holds the control of your life? The direction of your life? The policies of your life? The decisions of your life? Is it only Christ? And the words of Christ? And the administration of Christ? and the power of Christ, and the words of Christ, and the manifesto of Christ, the government shall be upon a shoulder. What the Lord is telling you is to prove that you have accepted him, you have received him, you have embraced him, and you have believed him, and you have accepted unto you a child is born, unto you a son is given, is that Tonight, you will turn your life to the control of Christ. You see, when we say, if you want to receive Jesus as your personal Savior, raise up your hand. What does that mean? What it means simply is this. The government of your life shall be upon a shoulder. He will be responsible for directing you, for controlling you, for instructing you, and for leading you in the path that you ought to walk. And that if you are accepting the government, the control, the directives, the policy of the Son of God in your life. And you will not have, you will not be under control of Christ and tradition. You will not be under the control of Christ and idols. You will not be under the control of Christ and fetishes you will not be under the control of christ and occultism you will not be under the control of christ and worldly pleasure christ and christ alone will be the controller the director the administrator the teacher the instructor and the strength and the power of your life that the government of your life will be upon a shoulder that's when you raise up your hand and you're taking a decision and you're making up your mind the government of your life shall be upon his shoulder and then it says when that happens great wonder in your life the moment you turn your life to jesus wonders will begin I said wonders will begin. And everywhere you go, you just see that, in fact, you yourself, you will say, uh -uh, I wonder. The peace in my soul, I wonder. The rest in my life, I wonder. The satisfaction that has come to me, I wonder. The victory that I enjoy now, I wonder. The happiness that has come to me, I wonder. The sleep, I sleep at night and I sleep like a baby. I wonder how my enemies have been conquered and they even turn to become my friends and they're looking for my favor. 
I wonder when I pray because I'm a child of God now and I've given my life to the Lord Jesus Christ before I stop praying, before I end the prayer, he has given me the answer already. I wonder when I mention the name of Jesus and the devil trembles and evil spirits flee away, I wonder the confidence I have, the courage I have because Christ is mine now. I wonder when you give your life to the Lord, you become a wonder. That's why it says in that verse, and his name shall be called. What word is that? Wonderful. Wonderful. My beloved sister, there, if you receive Christ tonight, you will get back home. Your husband will look at you and will say, Something has happened to you wonderful my brother over there as you receive christ tonight something will happen to you i said something will happen to you it will put joy on your face a smile on your face you know you've been going about before sad sorrowful unhappy angry with everybody bitter with life but now you receive christ and then your wife will look at you as you're coming he will see the glory of christ on you He'll see the beauty of Christ on you. And the first word that will come out of the mouth of your wife will be my husband. As I'm looking at you, I don't know what to say. All I can say is wonderful. And then your children will say, Mama, Papa, where did you go? What happened to you? And then your children will be saying, Hey, other children, come. Come and see Daddy. Come and see Mommy. And then, as they look at you, all your children will shout, Wonderful. And then you go to the place of work tomorrow. It's like, hey, you know, a few weeks ago, I was in one of the cities in, south, in the southwest. And then this child, already growing up to be a young lady, but she was born paralyzed. And uh, she, you know, she started using crutches early in life. And uh, she went to school. Well, her first day in school, uh, she, she went to the school with crutches. You know, just wumbling and wumbling and trying to move with crutches. And then she finished the first class in crutches, second class in crutches, and then third class in crutches. I've been on crutches all her life in the school. And then we were having the crusade like this. She, they came together like this. And as they came together on that Wednesday, I presented to them wonder walking Jesus. Everybody say wonder walking Jesus. Wonder -walking Jesus. Then I said, now we're going to pray. And then we prayed. And I said, if you are lame, rise up and walk. If you are blind, open your eyes and see. Many miracles happened. That child went back home. And then 10 minutes after getting back home, she threw the crutches away and began to walk. <laughs> On Thursday, Thursday morning, she patched her books into a portmanteau. And then, remember, since she got to that school, she always entered the school. Everybody knew her. The lady with the crutches. And then, uh, you know, she got, she got her portmanteau without any crutches at all. She entered into the gates of the school, walking like a real, real man, a real person, a real lady. And then they saw her. And they started gathering together. They came from here. They came from there. They came from everywhere. Who is this? Who is this? Who is this? And everybody began, wonderful. Where did you go? Wonderful. What happened to you? Wonderful. And then they go to the class. And then she sat majestically on her desk. And everybody said, wonderful. And then the teacher did not know anything because the teacher, you know, was just coming. And the teacher entered into the class. And as the students were going to greet the teacher, here this lady stood up and walked. And then the teacher said, what? Wonderful. Wonderful. And then they closed the school that day. And as they closed school that day, and then she came out of her class, all the other classes now, they were hearing story. They, they said, let me go and see Wonderful. Let me go and see Wonderful. And then as she came out with her portmanteau, everybody, all the attention was now on her. And everybody said, and we didn't do anything at the crusade. Then we came on Thursday. And then we came to the crusade. And people gathered like this. 
and we said now we want to give time for testimony and here comes the father with the daughter and they came out and the father said look at my daughter see what has happened and then by the time they finished everybody was shouting wonderful when christ meets you and when you meet christ tonight is the beginning of wonder in your life because unto us a child is born unto us a son is given and the government shall be upon his shoulder and his name shall be called wonderful and then counselor 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 you know there are people that come to a crusade and once they raise up their hands and then they finish the crusade for them that's all they do not understand that Jesus Christ, number one, is wonderful. Number two, is counselor. Because when you continue with Christ in the fellowship of a Bible-believing church, after that crusade, you have a problem, there's counseling. And you have a difficulty, there is counseling. You have a challenge, there is counseling. And Christ becomes the wonderful counselor in your life. And then it says... The mighty God, the might of the Lord will continue with you all throughout life. And then you will understand that the everlasting arms will be under you every time. Anything you match, if it is poison, it will be neutralized. Because you have this Christ in your life, you will not be afraid anymore. They give you anything to drink. If there's any poison there, it is neutralized. You are walking, they put something on the ground, you march on it, it is neutralized. Because you have the mighty God in your life. And he says, I will never leave you, I will never forsake you. He's the everlasting father. And he's a prince of peace. There will be peace in your heart. There will be peace in your family. There will be peace with your friends. There will be peace in the place of work. You will be as peaceful as you can ever be that's why we have come here together and that's why the supernatural wonder of the lord is about to take place in your heart in your life right now but remember as a child is born unto us we stretch forth our hand and we receive that child a son is given unto you you stretch forth your hand and you receive that son then you turn your life over to him and then you say this christ will be the only governor in my life this christ will be the only controller in my life this christ will be the only director in my life this christ will be the only policy maker in my life tradition bye bye idol worship bye-bye idolatry bye-bye and occultism bye-bye all the negative things that try to control your life all the gangs that try to control your life bye-bye the smoking and the drinking bye-bye i am now handing over my life to the lord jesus christ and the government and the control and the policy of my life will be upon his shoulders if you will do that tonight wonders will begin in your life yeah. and after you have done that then i will pray for you and any sickness in your life something wonderful will happen yeah. any demonic oppression in your life something wonderful will happen yeah. but first you accept him you receive him you turn your life to him and say jesus and jesus alone will be the controller and the governor of my life. Heads bowed and eyes closed. Heads bowed and eyes closed. It's now in your hand. If you want wonder of wonders to start in your life, the wonder of salvation, the wonder of salvation, the wonder of forgiveness, the wonder of life in Christ. You want that to begin in your life right here tonight. A child is born on your behalf. A son is given because of you. And the government of your life will be upon his shoulder. And if you are turning your life to Christ. And you say Christ. And Christ alone will be my savior. I will forgive my sin. 
and I will not go back into those things anymore. I turn my life to Christ and Christ alone tonight. Wherever you are, why don't you just raise up your hand? Just raise up your hand. I say, Christ, Christ, Jesus Christ alone will be the governor, the director, the controller of my life. Thank you very much. If you are raising up your hand, why don't you stand for Jesus? Stand up. Stand up for Jesus. Stand up. Thank you. Thank you very much. You are turning your life to Christ. You abandon your sin. You abandon your evil. And you turn over the control of your life to Christ and Christ alone. Idolatry, bye-bye. Gangs of evil doers, bye bye. Occultism, bye bye. Evil power, juju, fetish, bye bye. Then you can stand up. And then you are saying all the fornication, all the adultery, bye bye. You can stand up. You are saying all the evil practice of your life. Bye-bye. I give over my life now to Christ. He will be the governor, the controller, the director of my life. I say bye-bye to everything that is negative. You can stand up. Right now, a wonder is happening in your life. I said a wonder is happening in your life. And it is a wonder of forgiveness. All the sins you ever committed since you were born. As you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ now, as you believe and embrace him now, all your sins will be forgiven in Jesus' name. Amen. While you are standing, you'll pray with me. Are you ready? And you'll pray aloud. Are you ready? And you'll pray sincerely from the depths of your heart. Are you ready? Now you pray after me. Almighty God, thank you. I bless your name because you sent Jesus to save me, to forgive me, to pull me out, out of darkness, into the light. Lord Jesus, I believe you died for me on the cross of Calvary. You were given as the final sacrifice no other sacrifice you have paid the penalty of my sin lord jesus i believe you now that because of you my sins are forgiven because of you the penalty of my sin is taken away because of you I will not be punished again. You have set me free. Lord Jesus, I receive you as my personal Savior. Thank you, Lord. I believe I am saved. I believe my sins are forgiven. Now I turn my life to you. From today, you are the governor of my life. You are the controller of my life. You are the director of my life. And I know right now I'm experiencing the wonder of forgiveness, the wonder of salvation. And for the rest of my life, wonders will never stop. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Keep standing. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. We bless your name for your love. We thank you for what has happened even at this moment. Wonder of wonders, all these who are standing up, all these who believe on Christ now, the wonder of forgiveness, the wonder of salvation has happened in their lives. Lord, I pray the peace of God will come to their hearts now. And I pray victory over sin will come to their lives now in Jesus' name. Let your spirit bear witness with their hearts. 
now the children of God. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. God bless you. Keep on standing. And uh, the counselors are there now. And those counselors will give you a slip to write your name, just to identify yourself. I gave my life to Christ tonight. And the wonder of forgiveness, the wonder of salvation has come to me. After we finish doing that, then we'll get into the wonder of healing. The wonder of deliverance. The wonder of abundant life. The wonder of total freedom. Tonight, you are going to have total freedom. Freedom from all your sicknesses. Freedom from blindness. Freedom from uh, tuberculosis. Freedom from any uh, near any swelling in your body. Freedom from every work of the devil. You will see wonders. I said you will see wonders because I come to you in this state with the wonder-working power of the Lord Jesus Christ. That power tonight will break every yoke in your life in Jesus' name. And all the curse on your life will be taken away. And all the yoke in your life will be broken. And that pain and that disease in your life right now, everything will go in Jesus' name. Can we rise up for the miracle time? Miracle time. I said miracle time. Miracle time. That miracle time is coming your way. It is coming your way. It is coming your way. You will get yours now in Jesus' name. Identify the sickness you have in your body. If you are blind, you lay your hand on your, on your eyes. You close the eyes and then lay your hand. If you brought anybody deaf and dumb, lay your hands on them. Their mouths, their ears, just gently. You brought anybody paralyzed on the ground, helpless. Gently lay your hand on them. Or you have any swelling in your body, lay your hand there. Or you have kidney problem, you have tuberculosis, you have asthma, just lay your hand on your chest. Any problem you have tonight, I'm connecting you with wonder walking Christ. It will work wonder in your life. And when we finish the prayer and you hear the final amen, that wonder would have happened. Then you check up yourself, you will not see the problem anymore. And then we will praise the Lord together. Tonight is a night of celebration of wonders. Identify the problem, lay your hand there, raise up the other hand. You want a miracle, raise up the other hand. You want a wonder, raise up the other hand. Can you wave the hand at me? Wonder. I said wonder. I said wonder. Keep the hand up. When you hear the final amen, the wonder would have taken place. Father, in the name of Jesus. I come to you tonight presenting Christ, the wonder walking Son of God, unto your good people here, unto the people embracing Christ, believing Christ here. Oh Lord, I pray right now, wonders will begin in every life in Jesus' name. You have taken our sicknesses away. You have taken our infirmities away. You have taken our causes away. You have taken the poison away. You have taken the evil power away. Set the people free now in Jesus' name. Any swelling in your neck, in your tummy, on your leg, at your back, on the head, all that swelling, I command you now, Get out in Jesus' name. Any internal sickness, tuberculosis, kidney problem, high blood pressure, pain, suffering, walking, seeing things walking about in the body, all that affliction, all that pain, all that suffering, I command you, 
Come out in Jesus' name. That spirit of deafness, that spirit of dumbness, I command you now. Leave those captives. Get out in Jesus' name. Deaf ears, I command you, be opened. Dumb tongues be loosed in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray, those who are lame, those who are stroke, those who are polio, those who are in braces, those who are using crutches, I pray the supernatural power of Christ will enter into their bodies right now. Be strengthened. Rise up and walk. Let your joints, let your bones, let your muscles receive the mighty working power of Christ now in Jesus' name. Amen. Miracles begin to happen. Amen. Blind eyes begin to open. Amen. Dumb tongues begin to speak. Amen. Deaf ears begin to hear. Amen. Lame legs begin to walk. Amen. Miracle. Amen. Miracle. Amen. Miracle. Amen. Wonders everywhere right now. Confirm it, Lord, in Jesus' name. Take away the sicknesses from their bodies. Set your people free right now. Thank you because I know you have answered. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. It has happened already. I said it has happened already. I said it has happened already. The wonder is there already. Check up and see the wonder. Check up and see the wonder. Check up and see the wonder. Check up, see the wonder. It has happened. And as you see what has happened, tell the counselors, let's celebrate together. You are not blind anymore, you can open your eyes and see. You are not lame anymore, you can rise up and walk. If you brought anybody deaf and don't test them now, the miracle is there. You had any pain before it is gone. Any swelling before checkup is gone. Let's celebrate miracles together.